I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> Thank you, Ad. So beautiful here. It's more beautiful when it's summertime. It is winter at the moment. Isn't it, Adam? Mm So everyone, this is Bag End. Um, home of Frodo and Bilbo Baggins and originally built by Bilbo's parents, so the stories tell us. So you can see there is a little bit more detailing done on the inside of the door there, but only as far back as you can see. Reason being, this is the hobbit hole they use most of all, so by having those few panels on the inside, made the post-production work of stitching together the exterior footage they captured out here on the Alexander Farm, together with the footage they got in the studios down in Wellington. Because of course, these walls arrived to have the meeting about reclaiming their homeland, but by having those panels just made that job a lot smoother to make it look like one seamless location. But originally when they came here, Bag End wasn't going to be built here in the spot. Bag End was going to be built over there, underneath that pine tree. Because that's a pine tree, and in the books, talks of the oak tree above Bag End, where Bag End now sits, really is the prime piece of real estate that needed to belong to Frodo and Bilbo. The only problem was, there was no tree up there above Bag End. So what they did for Lord of the Rings, they went onto a neighbouring farmer's property, found an oak tree that they liked, took photos all the way around the outside of that tree, chopped it up into little pieces, walled it out here, pieced it back together piece by piece like a jigsaw puzzle, uh, put a big steel frame down the middle holding it all together, imported 200,000 fake oak leaves from Taiwan and wired them onto the tree. And there you go. As you would, easy as you like. You've got a tree exactly where you want it, exactly how you want it to look. So that's what they did for Lord of the Rings, but as you know, you chop up a tree, it doesn't usually last that long afterwards. But after Lord of the Rings, that tree was taken away and disposed of which gave them a little bit of a problem when they came back for the Hobbit. They went to massive lengths to make Hobbiton out here look the same. They needed the tree above Bag End to look the same, but preferably a little bit smaller, 60 years younger, because the Hobbit is a prequel set 60 years before the happenings of the Lord of the Rings. So the way they did that, the tree you see up there now above Bag End, that's not actually a real tree. That tree there was constructed down in the studios in Wellington, and it's built from steel and silicon. So it had the big steel frame, foam to give it the required depth. When that expanding foam was dry, they put silicon over the top. When the silicon was still damp, they pressed in a bark mold to give it the tree-like texture. Then the art department came in, painted it up, did their thing. This time around, just for a challenge I suppose, they wired around 350,000 leaves onto the tree. So what I'm trying to say everyone, I suppose in a very long-winded way, is when you go away and re-watch the Hobbit trilogy, which I'm sure you all will, <laughs> please take a moment to really appreciate the tree you see in the trilogy not even 30 seconds because they went to a big job to put it there. Uh, but a question for all of you lovely people. So the bench, that's where it was placed for the first uh, Hobbit movie where Bilbo sat in there one morning, Gandalf arrived and they had that exchange. Good morning, do you remember that? Good morning. Um, for the first Lord of the Rings movie, the bench is placed up the steps to the left hand side of the bag end door. That's where uh, before the birthday party, Bilbo's birthday party, Bilbo and Gandalf sit smoking their pipe. Bilbo blows a smoke ring. Gandalf blows the smoke ship that sails through it as they look out over Hobbiton and the sun sets out there behind the Kaimai Ranges. Beautiful scene. Anyone know what song is it? Sun doesn't set over there. Yes, 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 yes. Good. Sometimes we stay here for ages when you want to figure that out. Great work. Yeah, so the sun actually rises over there behind the Kaimai, it makes its way around and it sets directly behind Bag End. But they wanted to look looking out over Hobbiton. So the way they did that, quite simple really. They just got up very early one morning. They disguised the New Zealand sunrise as a Hobbit and sunset. So they've got the beautiful glow out there in the sky. The sun does come up too much. 
later on in post-production, you can just reverse the footage and make the thing go back down again. <laughs> um, but I mentioned on the coach, everyone, that they found this location as they flew over, looking for three distinguishing features. This is the best spot to see those three features. First thing they saw as they flew over is that well-established pine tree. That's the tree now known as the party tree. Don't get nervous as we get closer to it, but now one of the most famous trees in the world. Now, the party tree is meant to be the heart of Hobbiton, very old and well-established. They were pretty excited when they flew over and saw that tree. Um, has lost a little bit of greenery, especially on the left-hand side, only because the trees were filmed out here now over 20 years ago. So still a pretty good looking tree, all things considered. Second thing they needed, uh, a big mass of water. In this case, it's the lake. Um, that lake was put in by the family who owned the farm before the Alexanders. They put it in back in the 1950s as a duck shooting pond. So tree lake, the third thing they wanted, a large hill on top of which they could place bag in. That's the hill we've just walked up here at the moment. But here as well, as I mentioned, they love the beautiful rolling green hills. So from up here, you can see, um, within Hobbiton, you can see the fence line. Um, they have wooden posts with wooden railings run between it. That makes perfect sense in Middle Earth farming style, if I know my Middle Earth history correctly. Um, but as you get out the boundary of Hobbiton and back, that's back into the New Zealand style of farming with wooden posts with the number eight wire running. Forgot to put in their wooden railings. Uh, so the way they got around that for shooting, my hose is stretched out, just look like wooden railings running out there in the distance. There's a little trick for everything. Even down to the point that if they were little white dots out there in the back, our sheep aren't trained, they just go wherever the grass is and look like three continuous minutes. The last thing you want in the back of your shot is from the sheep to just be going from one side to the other to the other to the other. <laughs> just make your way down the path and then roll us to the front of the party field, tell one more story before we head off to the pub. Cool? Yes. Yeah, so the clotheslines were pretty much as they were for filming, but our props team changed over the, the clothes. That's nice. Sorry. Thank you.